Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Bacteria Help Plants? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the Plant Biotechnology Journal, published on July 23, 2022. Research conducted by Dawei Yan and Eduardo Blumwald from the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of California, Davis. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. All plants need nitrogen to grow. Farmers use chemical fertilizers to add nitrogen to the soil, but this creates a lot of problems for the environment. So, scientists have been working on alternative ways to get nitrogen to their plants. We found a way to edit the DNA of rice plants so that they produce a compound that helps the formation of bacterial biofilms in the soil. These bacterial biofilms are very important to plants. They help them to absorb more nitrogen from the air. The edited rice plants in our experiment did grow better. Introduction Plants cannot grow without nitrogen, but they cannot just use the nitrogen in the air, even though there is plenty of it. Plants can only take up inorganic forms of nitrogen from the soil, like ammonia and nitrate. This is why farmers use nitrogen chemical fertilizers. But this causes a problem. Half of the nitrogen fertilizer used in farming is lost in the atmosphere. This increases nitrous oxide concentrations, this then contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and global warming. Plus, chemical fertilizers can leach into the water. This causes the eutrophication of water. This might cause serious health problems for people. Converting atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia also uses up a lot of energy. Because of this, scientists are trying to find new ways to reduce the use of inorganic nitrogen fertilizers. One way is to work with bacteria. Some bacteria can convert nitrogen from the atmosphere into ammonia using a process called biological nitrogen fixation. If we can use bacteria to do this, then we won't need to use as much nitrogen fertilizer on plants. These nitrogen fixing bacteria work by making a special enzyme called nitrogenase that controls the conversion of nitrogen to ammonia. Bacteria thrive in biofilms on the plant's roots. Biofilms are a combination of bacteria and different compounds. We wanted to know what would happen if we modified the DNA of rice plants to increase the production of the compounds that help biofilm formation. Would that help the bacteria fix more nitrogen? We edited the DNA of rice plants to see if they would absorb more nitrogen. In the bottom photos, you can see rice seeds in petri dishes. In the top photos, you can see the grown rice plants. The column on the far left represents the original non-edited plant, while the other columns represent different DNA modifications of the rice. Methods. First, we tried to find which compounds stimulate biofilms. We found two candidates, lutalin and apigenin. Both are compounds called flavones. Next, we needed to edit the plant's DNA to make more apigenin. How? We blocked the catabolism, or breakdown, of apigenin. Then, we wanted to check if the edited plants made more biofilm on their roots and if they absorbed more nitrogen. We measured the amount of nitrogen in the roots using mass spectrometry. Finally, we wanted to see if the DNA edit had any side effects on other bacterial species. We sequenced the bacterial DNA and used computer programs to check the results. Alongside the experimental plants, we grew control plants, which were not edited. We compared the data from the two groups. Here in figure one is a flow chart showing how increased apigenin leads to increased plant growth. You can see if apigenin is increased, which is shown on the far left of the figure, that it increases biofilm formation, which in turn increases bacterial growth. 
This further increases biological nitrogen fixation and enhances plant growth. Results. We found that when the plants were grown under low nitrogen conditions, our edited plants had more nitrogen during different stages of plant development, were better at growing seeds compared to the control plants, made seeds that contained more nitrogen, had more nitrogen fixing bacteria, and were shorter than the control plants. Plants take up less nitrogen when they are older, which is why the 16-week plants show a lower amount of nitrogen. But there was still an increase in nitrogen uptake in our older edited plants. In figure 2, you can see we measured the amount of nitrogen gas fixated into the plant roots for both the control and edited groups. We used mass spectrometry to do this at two stages, 8 weeks and 16 weeks. On the y-axis of the graph, you can see the amount of nitrogen fixated. On the x-axis, you can see the two sampling time periods, 8 weeks on the left and 16 weeks on the right. For both time periods, the purple bars represent the control, or non-edited rice plants, and the orange bars represent one of the rice plants that had their DNA edited. How was the nitrogen uptake affected in the edited plants compared to the control plants? Discussion. Our results were really promising. Our new method improved rice growth. We already knew that soil bacteria were important, but we found a way to help them fix more nitrogen for the plant. In the past, scientists tried to introduce special nitrogen-fixing bacteria to the soil. This did not work because the local bacteria outcompeted them. Our experiment changed the plant instead. We were surprised that the edited plants were shorter, but this could actually be good. Shorter plants need less water and nitrogen, so as long as they produce more seeds, this change is useful. There are some issues with our experiment. Decreasing apigenin catabolism caused the decrease of other plant compounds. We should investigate whether this affects the plant in any way. We may need different amounts of apigenin in the lab and in the field. It is important in science that results are reproducible. We should repeat this experiment and test the plants in the field, not just in the lab. Conclusion. Have you ever tried growing your own garden? You should. You just need a little bit of space, rich soil, some seeds, water, and sunlight. Plants need even less care than pets, and you get to eat the results in the end. Without plants, none of us would be here, and without bacteria in the soil, few of the plants would even survive. So, we should try to use less chemical fertilizer on soil and use more organic compost. This way, we can take good care of the bacterial community in the soil. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.